Um, sure. There's there's a lot of blocks and a lot of frustration. Um, what I really figured out is I really had to have a lot of passion and I really had to love what I was doing um, or else I probably probably would have turned away several times. Sure, that's a lot. Uh, well, welcome everybody. Uh, I'm <clears throat> I'm Shannon Murphy, um, better known as Murph, and my art handle is uh, Mouse Cafe. And welcome everybody to the Local Artist Guild podcast. Uh, and conversations we're going to have with artists as, uh, as we can get folks in the chair to talk about things. So today, uh, I've got one of my favorite folks, Mr. Jay Marsh. And uh, welcome, Jay. Thank you. Yeah, we're so glad to have you here today. And uh, we're just going to hang out. And um, like I just mentioned, I don't have any notes today. So we're just going to hang out and shoot the breeze. That's something that we do pretty regular anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, should be nice. So uh, let's just jump right in, Jay. We'll keep this real simple. Tell us a little bit about um, who you are, where you're from, and then maybe how you found uh, me or the local artist guild. Or, you know, just, just tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you've got uh, several decades of experience, and sure. I always enjoy hearing about it. So let's start with the basics, who you are, where you're from. Um, born in Atlanta. Um, I've tried to leave a few times, but I keep coming back. Okay. Yeah. Um, I went to uh, Ringling School of Art and Design in Sarasota, Florida. Nice. Majored in illustration and photography. Um, there I learned uh, probably my most valuable class was color and design, which basically teaches me, it, it ta I learned the basics of art, uh, color, shape, line, and form. I mean, from there I could go into dog grooming or landscaping design, cake, you know, cake decoration. It sure. could be anything. Yeah. So that's what I really in, that's what I really enjoyed about school and about exploring materials uh, since I've been out. Sure. Which was a while ago. I graduated in ninety one. Nice. Yeah, ninety one. All right. Well, that like I said, you've been in it for a little while, uh, for a good while. One more time. The two most important class was and the two things you picked up out of that. Um, color and design. Color and design. Yeah, which basically um, teaches the, the fundamentals of color, uh, line, shape, and form. So you can basically take these elements, doesn't matter really what materials you're working sure. with. Sure. Um, and um, construct them into something that you're happy with. Apply it. them to anything. Yeah. Super cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about some of your experiences like post-college, like, you know, some of the, the things that you've... Uh, gone through. I know several of the things that you've worked on just in being around you, but tell folks a little bit, you know, we don't have your portfolio books in front of us to show sure. and look at, but some things that you've worked on uh, through your career that um, just kind of got you to where you are today. Oh, yeah. So um, I'd like to mention that before college, I actually, um, I was airbrushing a lot of t-shirts and I traveled with the fair circuit for a while. That okay. was one of the things I, I helped, uh, say, helped me save up for college. Sure. So that um, was late, eight, uh, mid, late 80s? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, that was a lot of fun following the, the fair circuit around in, in South Georgia. Um, after college, uh, I started going around with my illustration portfolio and my parents are artists. I started working my way around uh, these industry professionals. And when they saw my work, they didn't really know where to point me. Sure. I had a lot of science fiction and fantasy stuff, and um, they weren't really sure of the commercial uh, possibilities with what I was doing. So I just started to explore. I continued to airbrush. Um, I went into, my brother and I built um, um, sculptural lighting for a while. Okay. Um, I dabbled in body painting for a while, even did some uh, full shows where I painted everyone there and it was kind of set up like a fashion show. Right, right. Um, uh, murals. Um, and all this time I, uh, I was developing um, uh, a sense of um, certain forms and shapes that I was attracted to. Okay. So um, elements of nature, like uh, uh, chaotic elements of nature, tornadoes, hurricanes, sure. floods, lava. Um, and... Um, you can see some of these shapes. Absolutely. Right here, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the things that you're talking about uh, flush out in your work just organically, and that's that's a really cool thing. But it's interesting to hear about how you've built upon, 
you know, the basics and, and the building blocks of art. And then, you know, you're looking for answers and seeking how to apply that uh, and just going through the motions of what most artists do, which is experimenting until things hit and click and then help you continue to find your path. So yes. even with your decades of experience, do you still feel like that's something that you do regularly or are you contained by styles or stylings that you are comfortable with or tell us a little bit about that? Several years out of college, it was all traditional media. Sure. Um, but eventually I needed to find some steady income and my parents are graphic designers. So I went into graphic design for several years. Okay. Um, I found the problem solving in that was very interesting. And of course, uh, the basics of design, um, I could still use all of that. My, my dad helped me with typography. That was, that was a, a whole new element that needed to be, that I needed to learn about. Um, so lettering. Yeah. Okay. I did graphic design for several years and this sort of was a, a nice segue into the 3d world. Um, but yes, I'm still experimenting. I still, a lot of times, I'm not really sure what I'm doing. Um, instead of experimenting with materials and different kinds of paint, now it's um, uh, 3D textures sure. and lighting, and I don't always know what something's gonna look like. I wake up with an idea in my head, and um, I dive into it for a couple hours, but um, it's still hit or miss. Sure, yeah. It's, it's, it's the, still exciting. It's, it's part of the process, I guess, is, is just seeking out those developmental, not necessarily failures, but learnings, where you're just perpetually learning and building on all of the things you've learned up to that point. And uh, I've definitely seen, uh, just to go take it a bit further, like you're talking about, uh, you just start with an idea and start going after it for a little bit. But I, I see you do that with objects and and found objects and you know, uh, things that you've constructed with your hands and, and all sorts of different functional um, deco uh, st in your stylings, all sorts of touch on all sorts of things, but they come back to a lot of nature. Um, and of course, uh, shapes that you that we see and are found in nature. Um, but then your use of color is super attractive because it's a lot of high density, um, a lot of emotional influx from the colors that you do use and your ability to navigate scenery in that that way so That's super right. cool st stuff Thanks. so can you maybe send us through a little bit of a, a walk in time how um these folk these pieces that we've installed behind us here um these are uh, several of jay's uh, two-dimensional works um and i'm familiar with them from having seen them and heard you talk about them and watching you work and things like that of course um but tell Tell folks a little bit about your um, uh, about the patterns and, and re of course the repetition and um, and how you integrate different mediums that folks might not anticipate or see in your work that I only know about because we've talked about it. So you'll overlap certain mediums to get different effects and things like that. And I think that's really interesting and something that you do because I see people trying to figure it out and they're not really sure what what you did and so a lot of times you know people are trying to figure out how you achieved uh, certain imagery so can you tell us a little bit about your um, unabashed use of different mediums when it's not super obvious like it, you use them to oh, yeah. build more effect oh yeah, yeah. so um, a lot of the <clears throat> ideas for my work i i'm always watching um i just uh, i dive into my subject matter completely and i get saturated with it um, like, and then, give us an example. So you oh, so um, I go see an IMAX movie on um, uh, it's called The Ring of Fire. So the tectonic plates around the awesome. Earth. Yeah. Um, so uh, get saturated on lava or uh, glaciers and all this input. I'm I'm just soaking it all up. Eventually, it just starts to bubble up, and I get pictures in my mind. Um, a lot of them are are kind of abstracted a little bit. Sure. It's not a direct representation of what I saw. Um, and when I start sketching, um, these look kind of, the compositions are, are, are fairly simple, but my um, background in illustration has me doing um, a, a lot of planning. Okay. Um, lots of black and white sketches, planning out where all the lines are. Um, and eventually I'll 
uh, take a line drawing and I'm, I might use Illustrator to help me with the curves. Uh, that's part of my graphic design. Sort of dial uh, things in. Yeah. To, to how where you the want curves to translate. Are okay. Yeah. So I'll project that on the canvas. Sometimes I'll sculpt in the lines um, with a gel medium. Okay. That way I don't, I never lose my drawing. Um, it's always, it's, a, it, it's an actual, the drawing is an actual texture. So sure. I can paint over it however I want. Um, I really, um, even though I don't airbrush uh, too much anymore, I still think that way. Sure. These, uh, some people think that I paint in oil, but it's all acrylic. And I, I, I like to do a lot of blending. So um, there's several layers to each one of these and they're painted on very thin. And I use a lot of matte medium. Um, that allows me to uh, thin the acrylic paint out where I can just gradually layer it up. Sure. Lightening and darkening and, you know, eventually I'll, I'll start with an underpainting that's a solid color and then the, the colors start to build up after that. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even I'm learning stuff here, so this is great. I've these are the things that I, <clears throat> that I wish we could talk about more often when we do spend together, spend time together. We usually end up doing things and stuff and just going about uh, on our, uh, this, this adventure of art. So um, anything in particular you'd like to share about any of these pieces that you've got here or, um, you know, tell maybe a little bit about um, what you like to paint on. I know you could, there's a couple of different things here. Um, I think at least three different uh, applications here as far as what you painted on. Um, so tell us about, tell us a little bit about that. Sure. What do you like to paint on and do you procure those uh, retail or wholesale or do you build them yourself or tell us a little bit about that? When I started to notice over time the amount of ideas coming to me, I really had to think, um, think through my process for how I was going to build all these canvases or what I would be painting on sure because they quickly take up so much room and there's an expense involved whether you're buying canvases or building them yourself of then there's the trade-off of time um, this one is painted on masonite right. I probably won't be doing that anymore right it's really heavy it is heavy yeah um, and it um, things stick to it so, okay um, but that's actually built on a box yeah built okay. on a box yep. this one um, these two are actually the the main substrate is um, Luon, which is what interior closet doors are made out of. Sure. It's fairly inexpensive. It's very flat. Um, this one is wrapped with a canvas and that one's painted right on the um, right on the Luon. Sure. I like it a lot. Um, it stays flat. Um, in other words, it doesn't um, doesn't bungle. warp over time. Yeah, the moisture doesn't change in the surface so that it warps on you. Yeah. And I have uh, one buys um, glued to the back. Sure. Um, and those are hidden, so I don't have to be exacting about that either. Right. And then it gives it the, the floating appearance too on the display as well. All of this under the idea of it being um, simple for me to build uh, and low cost. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, something from nothing. It's one of my favorite things. <laughs> um, so a lot of good uh, information here. I appreciate you sharing all this with us. Um, how about, let's see, how did we get connected? Let's see, I think one of our mutual acquaintances sent you to uh, the, a local artist guild meeting when you were new to this area uh, in Cherokee County and Woodstock and uh, after having moved um, to this area with your wife. So tell us, tell us how how you found us uh, and um, maybe what's kept you around. I know you, we were lucky enough to have been hanging out for a couple of years now and that's, that's good stuff. So we, uh, we bought a house out here in Woodstock and we already had some friends in the neighborhood. Sure. Um, we, we really like the neighborhood and we love the downtown area. Um, but we quickly realized we were about a 45 minutes away from most of our friends. Right. So, right. Um, I started looking around in our immediate neighborhood and I, I, I had some trouble. I had some difficulty connecting with people. Um, uh, I really, I couldn't find any artists really. Um, so, I mean, I put a significant amount of effort into it over uh, a couple year period. Sure. Um, and at that point I, 
I sort of gave up, uh, started diving into my artwork, but I still kept my eyes open. Right. Um, we have a neighborhood, neighborhood Facebook page, and at one point, um, our mutual friend posted that she was doing an art show in town. So that cool. immediately yeah, uh, nice. piqued my interest. So uh, I contacted her, and then I met you. Cool. And yeah. the Artist Guild. Came to a meeting, and meetings, meetings, yeah. meetings, chase. Yeah. That's great. I walk up behind you and think it's me sometimes, because we show you <laughs> similar headgear. Um, but it's it's always great to have you around. You you know your longevity and your endurance in, um, in being an artist as a professional for so long, uh, I think just carries so much value, and especially in just sharing insights and ideas and experiences, and uh, and that's just to in case you that slipped your mind today, uh, all of those things that you bring to the table are invaluable in and so so just greatly appreciated. Uh, because, you know, if anybody asks, you're um, open to conversation or exploring ideas and uh, especially when it comes to creativity uh, or any sort of uh, creative or artistic applications or advice or uh, sourcing, you know, it just it just this wealth of uh, knowledge and experience, Jay. And that's just really something that's it, uh, really important and, and I really appreciate about you. Um, so. Tell it to see. I believe we just had had a show. We just had a show a couple weeks ago. Had our opening show here, and um, we invited folks out. We opened the doors. Had a little bit of entertainment, uh, and and had an art show. So on the spot, um, how about give me a little feedback? Tell me about your experience and 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 um, maybe uh, some things that you liked about it, or even maybe some things we could work on and get better, you know? So tell me about your day on, uh, let's see, what was the date? Was that the, uh, what was the date of the show? Anyway, 15th, thank you. Um, so tell me about your day that day um, and, and what you, how you felt about it. I know you've got some outdoor installs that we that you did. Um, and those went, went over really well. I have, I've had several people ask about those since then. Um, but, you know, did you feel good about it? You have a good experience? And obviously we're going to do that monthly. So it'll be a, a good thing to keep building on. Yeah. Just keep getting better. So Well, um, a lot of the, um, <clears throat> maybe the majority of the art world, um, creating it and selling it and talking to people about it is all about confidence. I mean, and that's what my years has, has given me. Sure. Um, I mean, this is basically all I've done. Um, so that day when, um, or even knowing that this artwork, this art show was coming up, I had known you for a while. Sure. And I had complete confidence in you. And um, some of the art shows I've done in the past have been fairly rigid. You know, show up at this time, um, be out at this time. Everything's very um uh, detail oriented with you it was very easy going you were very flexible oh, on cool. what well, was going to happen so um, that gave me confidence and it took the stress cool. out of all of it sure yeah well it's you know it's one thing when you're dealing with people and everybody has their own lives that you it's it takes some amount of that but at the same time we're all very dependent on one another you know i depend on you for other for things and all sorts of things so i i, I really appreciate that feedback i don't really know what to say but uh yeah. that was cool you know it's it's um to me, I would far rather talk about a friend of mine's work than my own. And that's something that helps give me a little bit of confidence is being able to know people and understand what they do and how they do it and how they operate as a human being um, and their, you know, level of commitment and things like that. And um, we communicate, I know you and I communicate very regularly, um, probably a little more than we should just because we have, you know, enjoy conversation together. Um, but you know, providing some sort of an atmosphere for people where um, you know, everybody knows that there is an obligation to contribute, but I'm also doing everything I can to help make this as easy as possible for folks. That's, I appreciate that. Wow, I yeah. don't really know what to say. And then I had amazing, uh, I think by now with a dozen artists in here, we've got well over a hundred years of experience in the building. And that's thanks to people that are carrying big, big loads like you you know, 30, 35 years of experience. I mean, that's a, that's a, and like you just mentioned, you know, this is what you've done. This is what you've done with yourself. And that's, it really shows in your work um, and your, your passion about what you do and your thoughtfulness. 
uh, and your depth really. And um, every time I show somebody some of your work, I get a lot of wows and woes and, and uh, oh, is this his work too? And, you know, a, a lot of really great complimentary expressions. Uh, sometimes I wish I could bottle those up and hand them to people so that they could. Uh, but that's one of the things that I get out of this that's, that I really like is the benefit of knowing that I've made some of the right decisions, even though all of life is just a, an experiment that we are just kind of navigating and figuring out as we go. Um, that's right. So that day it was great to show up and see all the different art artists and artwork that's here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was really fluid and a lot, we had a lot of artwork out here. Um, we had a nice flow of traffic. Um, and you know, there's plenty of conversation to be had. We had some people we expected to show up and some we didn't expect to show up and it was just overall, it was a really good day. Even each artist, um, has uh, so many individual styles. I mean, the work that I have, have here probably spans at least 20 years. Right, yeah. Um, some are 20 years old, and um, a couple that I installed here are were maybe just a few days old. Right, so, right. And there's a wide difference between all of those. Sure, absolutely. Uh, can I stop you guys for a second? Yep. Are you guys, like, hot right now? Because it seems Yeah, we'll like take a break for a second. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about... Um, You've got paintings and sculptures and this and, and, and all of this depth of work and knowledge. So tell us about what you do um, to make a living specifically. I don't know if you can mention uh, that you're the company that you work with or not, and that's okay. Um, but tell us, tell us about what you do at your day job. Yeah, sure. So um, these paintings and my love of these um, farms in nature, I also briefly got into um i started doing yoga and uh, i met my wife and i needed really good reference of i need, or needed really good figurative reference sure um i was trying to get her to pose and so get in some of these yoga poses and she can't hold them for 20 minutes while i'm moving all <laughs> right, my lights right. around so i started to look for um uh, digital figures that i could pose and i could light them however i wanted okay I, I discovered this program called Daz Studio. Um, I really fell in love with it. It became much more than a reference uh, program for me. I really, that's, I started uh, tinkering with surfaces and these shapes that I fell in love with over several years, I started creating them in 3D form. Um, so I could go back, I could use these shapes to, in my painting reference. Sure. And uh, I guess I started this in 2012. I was tinkering with, um, some ideas and I put, I joined the uh, community forum for Dev Studio. Okay. Um, and I did this to, you know, get some uh, technical support and to see what other people are doing. What I found is, is that there's a, there is a lot of support there, but in multiple areas. And uh, I started posting my work and a few people said that I could sell what I was doing. I never, okay, I sure. never, I never thought that I would be able to do that. I just, figured I, I felt like I was just tinkering like it wasn't so that serious you found this uh, a chat room message board in 2012 chat room message board deal and you were just sort of seeking out other like minds and looking for feedback you had your own questions but at the same time you started to show people what you did yeah right and then you started to get feedback from some of their artists sales. okay who sure are, who were who were already selling their work oh wow okay great yeah so i submitted my first product and i was hooked um it is my main uh source of income now and it's been slowly building up over these past several years okay um i basically um the daz 3d they have some very strict strict guidelines on quality but i can design my own products Okay, sure. Um, there are some minimalist guidelines to to follow, but I don't I don't make bikinis um, or anything that's they're going to have to figure out whether it's acceptable or not. Sure. Okay. So I mean, most of my stuff is still along these lines. It's still very environmental. It's a lot of lighting, um, atmospheric effects, and um, I'm I'm basically doing that all day, and um, I really love it. It's it's wide open as far as what I create. Wow. That's cool. Um, the um, the income is royalty based. I can um, so each product kind of trickles in income, you know, a couple times a month, 
and I think I have about 50, 60, 70 products now. Sure. Now, I took a moment to um, do some homework and look at your product offering uh, some weeks back just to get another feel for who you are and, and what you do, all of what you do, because you do so many things. So having seen it, it helped me understand a lot of the things that you tell me about in what you do uh, and these environments and lightings and, and objects and structures and, and forms that you you build and manifest from your mind, but you, you they're uh, built on this platform and this is a, a sales platform for you also. So again, I love that part of it. Okay. I just have to make the artwork. Sure. They handle everything else. That's really cool. So you yeah. just give them your creation and they manage the product offering sales and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's optional to me. I do provide some product support in the forum. Okay. So you're also, you've now become a reference point for other people that are maybe learning That's about right. your product offerings or using them. So tell us a little bit about what people do with these. And even more than that, tell us what these things are. Um, help paint a picture for someone that may not otherwise understand um, the, the digital oh. and concept world and, and what it is that you do. Because sure. I haven't seen it, I've seen um, vehicles and and uh, be you know pe people, uh, different beings and beasts and things like that you've made in different environments and and where you do pull in um, aspects of nature, but then turn it into something that that originated from your mind. So tell us a little bit about these products and and what people do with them. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so because it's not really a tangible thing. Yeah. And I think that's important to understand. Yeah, so um, acrylic paint, uh, I feel like I picked that up fairly quickly. Um, the 3D content creation in the CGI world is huge. Sure. I mean, what's when you're uh, you're watching movie credits, what's the, 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 big, the biggest group of people that you see? It's like hundreds of people that did all the, the texturing the and the digital lighting, animation, yeah, right, rigging, right. all of this stuff. So um, it's so... It's so vast and so specialized. You you just have to have all these hundreds of people. Um, I might I might do one uh, little aspect of that. So for example, um, someone buys a, a new building, um, but the artist that created it didn't uh, include any lights with it. I have a product okay. called Architectural Lighting Rig, where uh, it brings in all of these lights uh, that are already positioned. Um, in several places in different qualities of light. So people from there, um, one is for a standard room, very uh, neutral tones. I did one that might be in a Miami nightclub that's all very uh, bright colors, a lot sure. of pinks and greens. So but then the end user can adjust the position and size and color and yeah. intensity and all these different uh, attributes to the light itself. Yeah. Whereas you've built the product that brings the light into the imagery. That's right. Okay. So as far as usage, uh, I feel like a lot of people are using this program as a hobby. It's something fun and relaxing. Okay, sure. Um, the The content can be used commercially. Um, there are additional licenses if someone wants to put it into a video game or have it th or have something 3D printed. Sure. But for the, for the most part, any animation or still images, people can use them for anything that they want. Um, and I don't, I don't see a lot of end result. So you're, you, you're building all of these different parts to images that other people are building or um, in, in integrating into. Uh, is, it, is it any animation or is it um, primarily uh, static images? Primarily still images. Okay. People um, are doing some animation with it. And there's been some <clears throat> plugins recently that have uh, helped that along. Some of the renders you can do now... Um, I believe it's called Google Filament has been added in. Someone can do a render what might take um, five or ten minutes before now is in a couple seconds. Okay. It's not quite as realistic, but it's really enabled people to do a lot of animation with it. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And this is some. This is your regular where your regular income comes from. That's yeah. amazing. So you sought out. You're looking for your people, and here you find them, and you show them what you're doing, and it turns into a long-term uh, career with finance. Of course, your career as an artist, it's just another way you can flex 
uh, all of your experience muscles and what you all of your know-how into uh, you know a a livable thing, and that's that's amazing to me. I don't understand most of what you say when you talk about it, uh, but when I look at the image at images and the product offerings that you do have out there, it helps me piece it together because you know I, I'm all manual. I don't do any digital work, so it's one of those things when. I talk to Jay, the artist that does airbrush, you know, masterful airbrush and acrylic. I relate to much better than um, when I talk to digital Jay, even though digital Jay is really, that's, you know, your mind is always there and always operating. And like, you, I think you were telling me a few minutes ago that you've gotten to where you can build a model in your head and move it around and sort of tilt and see all the contours and, and then translate that into the product offering with uh with dads yeah and it's helped me to go backwards too if i'm going back to painting sure um it's helpful for me now that now i think in three dimension rather than two i've always tried to make my work dimensional but right. there's there's an added layer now where i can actually um rotate scale and change things sure in yeah. my mind before i I put them down on paper i know we've both talked to plenty of artists over the years and and um and just in general, um, tell us about some of the, you know, with your experience and, you know, I come to you for advice and, and suggestions about things. And I know that can be mutual depending on the application, but at the same time, tell us about, um, I know we like to help people as much as we can. Um, and in doing that, you end up hearing a lot about um, people's obstacles to how to get to just how to get to art how to get to you know being more art doing more art living more art and just it being a part of who you are um you know to sort of earn the title of artist and tell us tell us a little bit about your experience in the obstacles that folks have talked about with you and and what maybe you've offered to them as suggestions or advice or just as some guidance leadership you know whether it was intentional oh, yeah. or not it's like you know our hearts are in the right place and want to help people however we can sometimes that's not always great news but oh, yeah. tell us what you think sure um well i uh like i said i'd been in graphic design for a while when i discovered the 3d world um, I had um, a lot to learn. Um, I mean, basically started from scratch. Sure, um, sure. There's, there's a lot of blocks and a lot of frustration. Um, what I really figured out is I really had to have a lot of passion and I really had to love what I was doing. Um, or else I probably, probably would have turned away several times. Sure, there's a lot to that. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. So, um, over the years, I've had people come to me and they are interested in art. They don't know where to start. Um, I typically hear, I, I can't draw a stick figure. Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a so, pretty high one on the list. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, going into uh, asking them a few questions, I generally try and recommend that they start with something simple. Um, uh, it's, it's low cost. Um, I hear, you know, people say, I don't know how to mix color. I don't have the time to mix paint. I don't have time to wash brushes. Um, and I generally recommend someone start with just a sketchbook and either some colored pencils or markers. Sure. Um, you right away, you start to tinker with something. And um, it's. I think it's important to do it on a regular basis, like working out. Sure. Um, even just a little bit a day to where you start to open, you start to open the doors and keep the, the doors open for that creativity. Sure. Um, it was important for me to um, uh, join a community when I joined the Devs 3D community um, because you get support from people and you get ideas. There's When you start sharing your work, you get ideas for things you never thought of. Um, it really helps the momentum of all of it. Right. The feedback is just super helpful. Yeah, yeah that's great. So there you have um, materials and the frequency, which is daily, and then some kind of a community uh, for support. Um, sure. I've been spending a lot of time on Instagram and Pinterest lately, too. There's so many ideas there. Cool. Circling back to Pinterest. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You just you kind of go down a rabbit hole and you're like, wow, this is everything is. I know we shoot uh, different creative posts to each other 
semi-frequently and and it's just uh it's either capitalizing on something that we both know that we're paying attention to in our peripherals or it's just something mind-blowing and we can't help but to yeah. pass it along to somebody else and and uh and every every little thing like that sort of helps bring your your path like more clear or just kind of help steer it in the direction you want it to go but i yeah. great points you you said low impact low budget impact low time impact and um low lower your emotional impact to some extent where you keep it um keep it affordable markers and colored pencils this is this is basics they're probably sitting around right everybody has something like that or just a pencil and a piece of paper that's how we all started when we were kids some crayons um and um you know a little bit every day you know make it a point to do something that has to do with what you are passionate about every day i think those two things are super important and then the communal aspect is just you can't really say enough about having the right people around um, based on your interests and your passions. When other people share that, it really just makes it so easy to feed off of each other or uh, sort of, it just keeps the ideas, it just constantly erupting. Um, I mean, I pay attention to all sorts of things that you piddle and tinker with um, and then your body of work and think about, you know, your portfolios that you showed me and all the way back to talking about uh, uh, spray paint t-shirts, you know, in Florida and, uh, all of those things have brought us here. And I, I really appreciate that. Um, but I think your advice to other people is, is great. It's very thoughtful. It's very deliberate. It's very, um, very simple. And I think that was probably one of the biggest points is to just keep it simple. Um, do what you can afford, um, because none of this is free. Um, but also do it a little bit every day so it doesn't have as much impact on your day to day. You know, when you decide you're going to uh, art for three hours a day, that can be daunting to have to wake up and do the second day if you're not, you know, once it's a habit, you don't even notice anymore. Yeah, it's eventually just, it'll click. Right. And it's no longer a hobby. It'll turn into an obsession. Sure. Yeah, and, that's and a then, great way to put yeah, that. Three hours, eight hours a day. Right. Are you, you haven't? Yeah, you forget to eat or you forget to go to sleep or you forget to just stop and take a break. Uh, it's There's all sorts of ways to get lost yeah. in it. And uh, I think you're all guilty of that. Um, yeah. Once you got a couple of years on you, you realize that you got <laughs> what's certain been times nice, you can't What's been it nice uh, about the amount of time that I have into all this is whenever I get an idea, um, I just have to search my mind for some material or tool that I've used before um, that's a good fit for it. That can bring everything together. Yeah. Yeah, based on everything you know and what you've learned and yeah. how everything works together. Super cool, man. Well, Jay, I really appreciate your time today yeah, and, you. and, and, and coming to talk with us and uh, telling us about your work and who you are and what you do. And uh, I'm really looking forward to when we circle back and and um, talk with you again and maybe, you know, dive into some deeper things and and uh, specific ideas. And because I know how, you know, your brain, it, it goes on tangents and you, you have these thoughts and stories that go along and they're great. So uh, I, I can't wait to do this again, man. And we're going to get some uh, get some shots of your work and and, uh, and share yeah. it with people. And um, just to remind everybody uh, to check out the Local Artist Guild podcast and uh, the local artists guild and we're appreciating our uh, producers uh, Eric and Nicholas today and uh, all they're doing for us to help put things together so yeah. thank everybody so much and can't wait to see you again Jay. Very good. Thanks.